Kia ora everybody. Um, welcome to episode one of Know Your Numbers. Um, pretty excited about this segment. Uh, if you didn't listen to the podcast introducing this, I'll, um, this is the place for it. So Know Your Numbers is about business and it's about learning the ins and outs so that you as a creative can make a living from your creativity. And um, I'm, I'm real sort of basic in understanding when it comes to business i have a um you know i've been running a business now but it hasn't been something that i've really leaned into and tried to strengthen myself and so that's what this podcast is dedicated to so we'll be learning together this first episode will be probably the only episode that i talk alone and i really want to get guests on who run businesses or who know about business i want to get accountants on you know all those sorts of people who have a mind for money and numbers and um, business. So yeah, here goes. I'll talk from my experience in the hopes that you don't make the mistakes that I did pretty much. I've got a few notes here as well um, so I can talk through those things and then we'll go from there. So um, I remember a while ago when I was, so I've been doing Mukul since 2006 and I was 15, I had just turned 15 at the time, and when I started making money, I, um, it wasn't until I was maybe a little bit older that I started making money, and when I did make money, my dad told me, um, you know, that I had to consider paying taxes, because once you start earning, um, you're eligible to start paying taxes, and he said, what you're doing now is you're getting money under the table, and I didn't know what that meant. Um, you probably know what it means, but for those of you who don't, getting money under the table means you're getting, you're not paying taxes for the money that you're getting, pretty much. Another term is cashies, I've heard of those. And um, yeah, I didn't pay it too much mind, I was I was young at the time. <clears throat> I wasn't 15 when I was making money, I was doing free stuff back when I started. And then, um, yeah, when I started making money, I thought that I could keep all my money, like 100% of my money. And as I got older, um, it sort of started to dawn on me more and more about my taxes. And then in 2014, I was living in Palmerston North with my partner and I was working in a tattoo shop. And I had gotten a letter from the IRD, uh, Inland Revenue, those of you who don't live in New Zealand, um, the tax department, I suppose, in whatever country you live in. And what the letter said... um, was uh you haven't paid or you haven't filed any taxes uh, in the last four years i think it was since i started earning money and i got scared um i started freaking out i my mind straight away went to the worst case scenario which was going to jail going to jail for tax evasion i thought about wesley snipes like blade (laughs) and go to jail for tax evasion and then, um, yeah, I started freaking out a little bit. Excuse. <clears throat> um, I, you know, started thinking about um, excuses I had made in the past. And um, what I did was I reached out to um, my brother, Sai, and his sister is an accountant. And I reached out to her and I pretty much just spilled the beans. I just unloaded and just told her my situation. Um, and I really, at that point, just really wanted to just be faced with the truth, be faced with how much money I owed, um, you know, so I could start making a plan. And she was really, really helpful. She she didn't um, make me feel worse. She made me feel at ease and made me feel calm and helped put everything into perspective. And we made a plan and um, I ended up paying back all that tax. I think it like don't quote me on this but it added up to around maybe up to 30k over a period of time of taxes that I had to pay and um although there's a high number I was glad to hear it <clears throat> because I had a number to aim for and it felt um it felt good you know just sorting my life out really and I know a lot of people who work for themselves or work from home may be in this situation so um my recommendation and my advice would be to just sort it out, just reach out to an accountant and um, just tell them your situation because they're there to help. Like that's literally their job is to help you get on top of your taxes and make sure that all your money that you're earning 
um, you know, the government gets their cut and then the rest is up, you know, is your money. Um, so yeah, that was the situation that I was in and I was, yeah, I was happy to be, you know, finally at the base of this mountain that felt like it was creeping in the back of my mind for so long. Um, over a couple of years, I think it was, um, paid those taxes. Also, once I, um, turned up on the radar so to speak I you know could actually start paying back my student loan because I studied uh, from 2011 to 2013 Um, so I started paying that off as well and because I was behind a little bit I think I owed a little bit more in um, what's it called in late fees I can't remember what the hell in interest Uh, and then yeah so I got on top of on top of those things in it I could actually just start working and then one of the things that I implemented so I figured out how much money I needed to pay tax and also at the same time I got GST registered um, which is registering as a business as a sole trader because it was only me working you know for myself and you know not having an employer or having employees and then when you get GST registered you have to pay GST which is 15% in New Zealand um, at the moment I know things change and the tax that everybody pays is income tax, which is 17.5%. So you add those two numbers up, you get 32.5% of tax that I have to pay. And um, so what I've done now is I've set up a system. So whenever the money income comes in, so money from doing moko, money from selling prints or whatever, as soon as that money comes in, I put 40%, just to be safe, 40% of my money into a tax account. So that when it comes time to pay tax, I know that I always have enough money. And it's at the beginning, you know, when I went from keeping 100% of my money to keeping 60%, it was hard um, because you you see the whole sum and then you have to take a chunk of that out of it. I would rather just see the 60%. Um, So it it took a bit of discipline to um, implement those sort of systems. But I feel really good now like about putting certain percentage away and also what else I've implemented is putting 20% away for investing and that can be investing in anything to do with um, business Uh, could be investing in uh, for example if you're a creative person and you want to get into digital putting 20% away with of all your income Um, you know you may be able to eventually buy a computer or an iPad or a Wacom tablet you know those sorts of things so I've got 20% away um, purely for investing into things to do with business and then also another 10% of that this is a thing I learned off my brother Tsiari 10% of that I put away for um, myself and my partner for things that um, come up for us like whether it be going out to stay at an Airbnb for a weekend for a date or something like that things to um, just spend on ourselves as a couple and then so what I'm left with so to tax, 20% to investing, which takes it up to 60%, and then 10% to um, our rainy day fund or our couples fund, and then you're left with 30%. So I pretty much live off 30% of my money. And I think it's a good place to start. um, So I know that, um, you know, I'm being disciplined and I'm living below my means. I know there are times when I need to dip into a little bit of money for business expenses and things but all in all I try to keep disciplined and um, you know live below my means and where I am at the moment I pretty much only spend money on like kai you know bills and that's it like I don't really buy things that are just wants and not needs other than business things business related I anything that I can that can help do my work better I'm okay with spending money on that and um, I can claim on all of those business expenses too. So, um, yeah, that's another thing to think about. Um, yeah, I hope you've learned um, learned a little bit from this podcast. Like, as I say, um, you know, I'm, my understanding of business is quite basic, hence the reason I started this podcast, because I want to get people who are way smarter than me and pick their brains and learn with you fellas, the listeners. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed episode one of Know Your Numbers. 
I'm excited to see where this podcast goes. And thank you for listening. Um, send me a message with all the things you want to learn about and questions that you may have for business-minded people or for um, accountants, uh, number-orientated, money-orientated people, so I can ask them and we can um, you know, sell this waka together. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. Mauri ora.